Hi everybody and welcome back to my channel. I'm Alicia from Alicia Be Creative and if you are someone who struggles with setting up a background for your Tumblr photography, I am going to show you exactly how I set up my backgrounds, where I get my supplies, and how you can edit your photos. So let's go ahead and get started. So first up is where I get my supplies. So I typically grab all of my supplies from the dollar store. It's a perfect inexpensive place to grab up a bunch of different themed things for the forefront and backgrounds of my Tumblr photos. That way I can keep things themed, I can keep things fun and exciting. I have a huge bin full of different themed items that I picked up during the seasonal times to be able to decorate the forefront of my Tumblr photography pictures. So the dollar store is a perfect place to pick up some amazing finds. Definitely right now it is fall and Halloween themed. So I am going to grab up some fall and Halloween themed items here to show you guys how I put together my backdrop. You can do this so inexpensively. Please do not feel like you need to go out and spend a whole lot of money in order to get supplies and things to decorate your background. This should be super inexpensive and honestly all the things that I got cost me less than 10 dollars to grab everything that I needed to create the backdrop. So I'm just going to peruse a little bit. I love to grab up the different florals that are themed for the holiday. I also obviously want to grab some cute little pumpkins. I loved that I found these little leaves and things that were there as well, like separate leaves. I have my helpers in the store with me today. Um, so grab lots of things. Don't feel like you need to stick to one thing. I'm someone who grabs a lot of different things and then I'll take those items home and kind of decide how I want to arrange everything and how I want it to look in the foreground or the background of my photography for my tumblers. So I'm just gonna continue to peruse through this area. Right now, this is a huge section. They have just put out the fall stuff. And so of course I have to touch and feel everything and kind of decide which things I'm going to need. So while on my peruse through everything, I saw this super cute little bucket with the little twine around the top edge. And I thought that would be absolutely perfect for kind of the background of the fall themed photography area I'm trying to build and create. And so let's go ahead and grab all of these things and bring them home and let me show you how I put everything together. Okay, so the very first thing that I like to put together is I like to put together the actual background images that I'm going to be using. So I grabbed this marble paper as well as this like wood background paper that is in rolls from the Dollar Tree. I also grabbed the two foam boards that I'm using below here from the Dollar Tree and then those sheets of wood planked scrapbook paper I had picked up on a recent trip to Hobby Lobby. They were literally like 82 cents each and it's perfect for a background. So I'm gonna start with this marble backing. So what I love to do with these foam boards is I like to make them double sided and that's so that I have sort of the versatility of being able to flip between different styles and different sets so to speak as I go through the seasons and set up different backgrounds and foregrounds for my Tumblr pictures. So one side of this is going to be the marble background which I love to use in times when there isn't sort of a theme to the Tumblr that I am taking pictures of. I love to use kind of this marble background as kind of a very basic and plain background that I can continue to add things to to enhance or make colorful and match the aesthetic of the tumbler that I'm trying to picture. So this is literally shelf liner. I'm going to use this kind of contact paper shelf liner to adhere it to the back of this board. Super simple, super easy. You also, you're going to see me use the other two items that I grabbed, which was that wood background which was a roll of just paper from the Dollar Tree that's usually for like bulletin boards and things and the scrapbook paper, which you're gonna see me use some double-sided sticky tape to adhere to a board. So I love to grab a couple of boards every time I go to the Dollar Tree, just because I do use these quite often, and they do last quite a long time, but I like to have a few extras on hand just in case I see out a really pretty contact paper that I wanna use as a background. You don't have to just get your contact paper or your shelf liner from the Dollar Tree. They have some really cute ones at Walmart as well. Obviously a little bit more expensive than from the dollar store, but still great finds and really unique kind of looks, if you will, that I think would really be great for a background of your Tumblr pictures. So now we're gonna go ahead and jump into the other side of this board, which is gonna be this very plain sort of like wood, wood style background, if you will. So this is like bulletin board paper. It's a little bit more, 
um, delicate than I thought it was. So I did end up ripping a little bit, but because this is going to be more of my background that you see in the back of the picture and not the foreground, I'm not really worried about any of the wrinkles or anything that I got in this. Um, the other thing is I use a lot of items on top of these boards and usually only show a small section of the image on the board so I usually am able to kind of finagle things in a well that, in a way that helps me cover up any imperfections that I wouldn't want to be shown in the pictures. So I've just added a few strips of double-sided tape here just some double-sided tape that I would use for regular crafting when I'm working on tumblers and I'm just going to use that to help me stick this to the board. I felt like it was the quickest and fastest way to be able to get this kind of stuck to the board rather quickly and I think that it worked out pretty well. So this is where I got a little bit of crinkling and bubbles. So this paper was pretty delicate and it didn't give me a lot of give. I wasn't able to like pull it up and replace it so I had to be kind of mindful as I continued to roll the rest of that section down the length of the double-sided tape areas to try and minimize the amount of bubbles and pockets of air that kind of were kind of shown through this kind of double-sided or this kind of wood plank section. So I'm going to use a couple extra pieces of tape just to be able to stick the edges down and again this is going to be a background of the image that you guys have already seen in the beginning of this video but I still want to make sure that this is in an area and in a section that can easily be covered up by other items so we're gonna decorate the second board with these wood pictures here so this is scrapbook paper it's like the thin scrapbook paper that I got from Hobby Lobby again they were like 82 cents 62 or 82 cents each so really inexpensive really easy to be able to grab these up a perfect kind of a background looks like a wood floor absolutely pretty so I'm just going to literally stick these together with a little bit of double-sided tape get them adhered to the board and this is going to be the foreground of my tumbler setup and design here so let's go ahead and fast forward through this and let's get into setting up our actual background and foreground so that it's ready for our pictures to be taken with our new tumbler Okay, so something else I wanted to show you that is in my space is I have these large studio lights that I use. These are newer lights. I have them linked in my Amazon store if this is something you're interested in purchasing. This is not a necessity to make your Tumblr pictures look beautiful. A simple couple of ring lights will definitely do and that's exactly how I started with was with just a couple of ring lights place strategically to make sure to give myself the maximum amount of light on my pictures and literally just some really cute setup backgrounds with a lot of Dollar Tree items. So let's get into how I put together all of the background items and what I use to put everything So up. as you saw, I literally have probably the most ghetto sort of setup here. I literally have a stool, which I have out in my craft space that I put everything on. It's right in front of my lights, which is also in front of the background that's seen when I do my YouTube intros. And that's where I do all of my photography. So I've just laid an a board down that kind of is always there and I'm going to put that wood plank board with the scrapbook paper over top of that. Another thing that I definitely think that everybody needs when it comes to taking great tumbler pictures is a white background of some sort. So I grabbed this rug from Amazon. It was like 12 or $15. I've had it now since I started my tumbler journey and it's in almost every single picture that I take of my tumblers but it's the perfect white backing to be able able to really show off all of those gorgeous colors and make sure to kind of break up any of the other colors and things that you're going to be adding to the layout of your backgrounds. So I'm going to show you kind of all the goodies that I grabbed here. We're going to speed this up a little bit and I'm going to just kind of walk you through what I'm doing, why I'm doing it, some tips and things that maybe you can try too so that you can make sure to have some beautiful backgrounds for your Tumblr pictures and make everything beautiful and stand out. All right, so here's all the stuff that I had grabbed from the dollar store. So I first grabbed this sort of like burlap string stuff, which I end up not using. I just haven't quite figured out how I can put that in the forefront of sort of a fall themed picture and get it to not look so kind of clumpy or clunky. So I'm going to start with the florals. Um, I purchased that small little hay bale, which originally I thought I would kind of have it as a standalone with maybe a pumpkin on top, but I'm actually going to use that at the base of that bucket to hold my florals straight up. So now I'm going to be grabbing one of the bows here. 
And this I'm going to actually adhere to the bucket. I thought it would look so cute to just have this adhere to the bucket to kind of just match the tumbler that I'm going to be taking a picture of in this area here. So I'm just gonna grab a little bit of double-sided sticky tape to be able to adhere that to the bucket. Um, and yeah, so now I'm gonna decorate the rest of the forefront. So there's a couple of things that weren't pictured or weren't seen at the Dollar Tree. So like this beaded string here, I actually got from a gift that my sister gave to me, which I'm pretty sure that she thrifted this item. So she is someone who loves to go thrift store shopping for decor. And so I got a beautiful decor basket and this was part of the things that were in it. And it's perfect, perfect, perfect. These little beaded garlands for the forefront or backgrounds of your tumbler pictures. So I'm now gonna grab some of those leaves, those kind of single leaves and just place them on that wood area to kind of bring to life that bottom section. And so the way that I decorate or put together my backgrounds and foregrounds for taking pictures is probably somewhat of the same way that I look at decorating pictures or look at decorating tumblers, I should say, or designing tumblers. I kind of take a bunch of things, right? And I kind of pick and choose where I want things to go. I'll pick things up, move things around and kind of just spread it around so that when I do put that tumbler right in the center that I'm able to really get a beautiful look at that picture as or that tumbler as that main forefront and focus but to still be able to feel all the feelings that I want someone to feel when they see my tumbler with the different aesthetic that I'm putting around it so I hope that makes sense but this is something that you should just be having fun with don't feel like you have to stress yourself out I started with just a few things next to my tumblers, like a couple of fake flowers, um, a scarf that kind of matched the aesthetic of my tumbler before I really went as big as I do now for the decoration and decor of my tumbler pictures. So start small, don't feel like you need to have a huge setup. Um, but there are definitely a lot of things that you can grab super inexpensively to be able to try out and test out different backgrounds and really make your tumblers pop. So another tip that I have found is that I try not to do complete flat lays of my tumblers. Most recently, I've been propping up the underside of my, my white rug with like a couple of sanding blocks something that gives it height so that the tumbler is sort of at an angle and I get better pictures of my tumblers without so much of the light kind of blinding the picture when I go to edit it, if that makes sense. So if, you, if you're someone who uses a lot of ring lights, you know what I'm talking about, kind of like that weird ring and kind of like that huge brightness. That is something I try to avoid and I realized that in order to do that, if I prop the cups up a little bit, I get a lot less light in those areas so I don't have to do as much editing. So the last thing that I'm going to do is just put up the background. So I just set that board on a chair that I have right behind my setup here and that is pretty much it. This is perfectly set up and ready for me to be able to take a picture of the tumbler that I'm going to be showing you and photography or taking a picture of or photographing in this set. So this is a final look of what everything is going to look like when I take that picture and snap that picture. So obviously I'm going to switch to camera mode and take a quick picture, but let's get into how I edit my photos. All right, so to edit my photos, I use an app called A Color Story. It's a free app. And this is the app that I use to brighten my pictures and enhance them, you know, crop them, change the orientation, you name it. I typically do everything in a color story. Now, you can do a lot of base editing in your camera settings, um, but I like to use this app because I can do everything in one shot. So I'm going to select the picture that I am going to use. So I have a landscape image that I'm just going to rotate with the rotation button so that it is oriented the correct way. And and then I only use the adjustment section. Typically that's what I use to be able to enhance my pictures. And I only use the brightness, the saturation, and the vibrance. So the brightness I usually will set anywhere from 11 to 20, and it's kind of just dependent on how bright I want to make the picture without making it look sort of too vibrant and too 
um, bright, sort of like oversaturated with the white. So I like to lighten the picture a bit and then I will change a little bit of the saturation, usually somewhere between five and eight, just to make sure that the true color is shown. And then I'll change the vibrance as well to again, mimic the exact color shown. So additionally, in the first tab of a color story, there are different sort of settings that you can choose that automatically do all of these things. But I like to make the adjustments myself because it changes every time. And so when you want to see the adjustments or the changes you made, you can just hold your finger on the picture and it will show you what the original looked like so you can make sure that it looks the best and it looks exactly how you want it. So once you're done with that, you can go ahead and save this image and then you'll be able to use it wherever you'd like to. So here's the side by side look at both images. So that first image was the original image and here is the edited version. So I hope that today's tutorial was helpful. I hope that you enjoyed everything I put together and I hope you're able to create some beautiful backgrounds. Of course, if you love today's tutorial, definitely make sure to give this video a huge thumbs up and subscribe to my channel if you aren't already. And you guys know that I will see you very soon and in the next one. Bye.